four minutes starts now. Okay. Five months ago, I started the cross-border operation. Uh, you know, through that month, I actually transported two, two people. Two people? To date, in this day, I'm actually transporting 125 people per week. That is uh, 500 and... South African Statistics Survey. Let's go Lunagi. In Kunda, yes, I'm at Egis. It was like Abantaba Valelo, we see Balesaka fifteen million. Milta and Amalang. Futile and Kakalona go pin the letter e revenue. Yemali Ebalelo, Lapa with thirty nine point eight billion. Minibus taxis are the heartbeat of the South African economy. Go to Age, Lenkunda Lenagi, I to me like a Sengo, who take a pin the Benabungo Zigakul, one Agama on a Mategis, as a full foos. Namtanis is an Ohau head. When it is, I suffer for Sago and Alum Kakalo, Futiga and Age, who ambitious, empty term and good business like Lamatis, Luzo Sugangala, Manege, a Conagelanga Pant. Make you make moves to Tata Uhambo, Olia Mittelbeck, who gets an omelissa, or when there is seen to Zenze, Ucheremaya, Robert, who found a government to get business like Helama Degis. We want to redefine ourselves. Mm -hmm. We want to redefine how people see the taxi industry. Yeah, his family and friends tell us more about his undying spirit for entrepreneurship. A well established young businessman, what are the challenges? I believe. Too much in myself. Put your mouth to humble, look for shiny Lisa and I studio seat. Lapa Connors is Contal and Gazi Fisos of Kukula and Kunja Matigis. In both uh, cross border and corporate, the market is big. Many known as SK, the owner of SK5 Logistics, based in Middlebeck. I'm a taxi operator, the youngest taxi operator in Middlebeck. My business is more dynamic. Uh, we've got our own established offices. We do operations on certain countries. Our main core of the business, we are uh, transporting people in the mines, in the industries around, and the local taxi routes around here. SK5 Logistics Galaxies, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Hey, as a moment of silly, we like having us busy to go looking at Glen Quint. Mobas Jill would shoot Gaitang, a lemola, a saying a fear and it again in Fagin. A gum cousin, and some e cabang e cabbage as the Funega and to two and gain our museum to Tabant. Firstly, for to be a member of a particular association. Mm -hmm. After becoming a member of the particular association, Kano mm Atolin. -hmm. And Kunim Kom, Yokfagin, or Manu Fagifa Makaramaning, is cut the sewer and actually would name was a Fagi Carayon. When you are a mad for us, it was easier for me to think again because in Gene Mobabuam. He into an affluence with him, Campo, on a free shop Mutu Luti, he into an eighty X factor, Yawa SK five logistics. Him Taraba Marie Bonello. Yeah, Marie Bonello. Sinful Pumela and Pandas of Sangan. Yeah, Uncle Kusia Macum. So Firstly, I mean, I wanted to give my customers a comfort Nicole. and for them to know mm. where they can get me. Mm. The SK5 uh, address is a relatively uh, uh, a young business owned by a young person with uh, different ideas on how to actually interact into the public passenger transportation in a different way. The uh, reception area here too. Yeah, Baba. Uh, La ma customer ita figure la kona. Ma ma zo booka for kama, especially for long distance. Yeah. Na la Baba local for my trips and things like that. Eh, uh, nunga mila. Yeah. Eh, uh, she tezo ta finance, ta tezo she's a tezo ta administration. Yeah. San Buena. San Buena. See kona, see kona. People that are around Middlebrook, see I pick up and bring them here. Yeah. But. Once we, uh, the Zimbabwean route, yeah. we pick up people in Krobele uh, style, we pick up people in Mobile Hall, yeah. some in, uh, in Polokwane, then we go to Zimbabwe. Yeah. Mozambique, we pick up in around Red Bank, some in Pretoria, uh, Johannesburg, mm -hmm. Red Bank, going down to Mozambique. Yeah, wow. Yes. Multi cross border, I hope as the Laishi in all as a coexist, the Navy and the Gang and the Pizu, we want to try and make the any ticket. No, we've actually separated goods from uh, from passengers. Oh, okay. I adopted that from Shokomela from Santa. Oh, okay. To actually avoid my fatalities that are happening on the road. So, the Tina in all I Laisha, my passenger. Yeah. Then I'm a passenger. Yeah, then I'm a packet. I mean, you are having some equals. Okay. Yes. Nizen no shinjo. I wonder what you're feeling. That's why we said Santa. We want to redefine ourselves. We want to redefine how people see the taxi industry. Yeah, Baba. Well, well. Hello, Baba. 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 Because now we to spazani with driver. Abanya man pesli sabo kambi. I don't fast zone. I don't to do no shyla zone. So born agwa ba born to drive anjan. Then they say one of us you got. Hey, that's best not tame man. I no ya shyla man. Best not tame with you shyla man in the lost shyla ngao. Uksemenda wa me SK5 in pilo ame shinche kuhun. I contract ba ngike zayon amen. Bang niggas the contract to waiting for twenty five. Twenty five, no Maranjan in your horn. I got to be in Kiel to so twenty seven or twenty eight. If it's twenty five, less of the Sunday, twenty three, but make a show the HRA to be my day far in twenty three. It's cool to send Zani here like I'm trying to open up bigger doors for us. That's what I do on a daily basis. I'm an executive. RSA Mozambique Group Committee. I'm a Secretary General in Lelapo. Mm. That's where I'm mostly at, attending such meetings on how we can fix our corridors to with how can we maintain the economy to South Africa, see Begelan, yeah. and how we can actually trade better. Motivate my drivers, yeah. especially that are dealing with uh, Lilo Khan. Yeah. I actually uh, got them, I want to the call to become a muscle as well. Okay. I do not take anything from it, it's their salary. So that is why they are the highest paid taxi drivers in Melbourne. Oh, cheers, sir. 
I started using this transport last year when I was doing my grade 11. And I've been using it since then because it's very efficient and it's always on time. And the cost is not so high. And I always get to school on time, never late. I'm a very short-tempered person. He doesn't want to see himself not succeeding. So I did a silo, no matter what it takes him to. At a young age of 27, business <laughs> My dad was a KTX operator. You know, one of us needs to be a policeman. Uh, one needs to be a doctor because I was uh, One needs to be a lawyer to get him out of trouble whenever he's in trouble. And whatever career path that we choose, it be a career path more recognized. Then I went to vet university to study law. Making money for me, it was entirely more money. I used to save money all the time. So I feel like thing. There was many ways of making money, quick money, that I actually rushed into it. Second year, you know, being in the mix of how things, mixing up with people, it actually got more focusing on the negative. Unfortunately, Papa got to go far, so as na alu wana kuas kuas kulu kuas kulu hujo re na ake na ake kono afoda chile tawar kimbatele lor adire that cause I fit in then. I dropped out after my dad passed away. One thing about my mother, uh, she's always supported me in every little thing. I get around. Gordon Tongo lang ay derang. That's why I keep like a working support or ask a logo. I naga namra ako mafilong ay derang just sing right because of na kapal is gor kim derang. That's why I keep. Ibon Gordon Tongo lang ay nyako ay derang. Yah business kibe kausli na kim support. They got a container. It was actually bought for me to operate. He had a public phone, operated public phones uh, for a year, opened up the car wash next to the public phones, then I grew from there. I was in the township in Merlebeck. On my grade two, I was in my school in Mosterlos. I was in my school in Mosterlos. Because of that, I was in my school in Mosterlos. If I was in my school in Mosterlos, I was in my dad, I was in my school in Mosterlos and things like that. So I was in my school in Mosterlos. I was in my school in Mosterlos. I was in my school in Mosterlos and I was in my school in Mosterlos. Since then, Kala Nami Mparashele is the The thing that drew us together I'm a very short-tempered person. One 
was this particular time, I don't remember the exact year. Sisi Valentine Paul and Brian Nomunyo Cherry from Ingi Aoti. Then Mama Chita started the fight. Then we fought there, but that fight didn't end. They carried on for a couple of months. Every time we sit by Samba, Slangana na bo isugi le kona la poj. Bali mo to owa, bali mo energetic. Ibi le bali stout. Hona le ibi le shopo kama next door. Heba rikis. It's been funny. Heba rikis are like this lady, but hatlo bula garage like fente. They're king fente ni ante bali kole. Hey, look cool, eh? We're 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 at one o'clock. Kitchen ya high. I love to go garage. And would would take a while actually. But how hell are they? We we they actually crawl inside the garage. They in bato city zimba into those little funny things. Yes, but we'd say it's about Mikey and stuff. Yeah, but everyone are all out there like her. I'm a very ambitious person. I believe too much. In myself, nothing can conquer me. Getting weakness and Tsikori, he doesn't want to see himself not succeeding. So I did a silo, Nyakori Sipumelele, no matter what it takes him to. He didn't actually enjoy getting Bongwana because of people in his age, they still go out and drink, party, and what, what. Now, it's all about rotating just to make sure that we are not going to be a gang. I provide a lot of talent as our father, that our father is not going to be a thing. Ken Tate, a brother, a well-established young businessman, or a thing to challenge us. He does everything for his kids. I provide each and every little thing that I believe that they need to have as children, things that maybe I did not have as a child. But most important, I want them to have the best education. Despite its major contribution to the country's economy, the taxi industry is often eclipsed by ruthless behavior. Gotwage o khaogelo o munye ke boso ma business ke abasha abasafufusa kuona lo mkhakalo futhi ke bakholelwa ukuthi ke bona bangakwazi ukuthi basize ukuyishintsha ke indlela i tax industry ibuke kangakhona kodwa ke ingabe le nsizwa lena ke inako konke ke okukhona na ukuthi ngakwazi ukwenza lokho efuna ukwenza kona lo mkhaka I'm here to see Pepsi I'm expecting to to be motivated and actually grow bigger than I am today like many taxi operators, Khaokhelo is a self-taught entrepreneur with a fleet of taxis in Middleburg and Bumalanga. He believes the professionalism he's introduced into his business sets him apart from his older competitors. He's joining me to share his ambitions for the business. Khaokhelo. Hey, how's it, man? Shabu, Jong. Ah, ke shabra. Oh, grand. Ah, ke shabra. Do you love to me, bra? So, how's it going with the taxi? Why can't you? Yeah, I can't. For three months. For three months? Yeah. Okay. And then if I was wrong business? It's great. It's great. Yeah. It's great. When I lead the taxi to Renkang, local, when I lead long distance, and then when I lead the client, uh, like the corporate, the corporate transportation, yes. essentially. Which one makes money? Uh, the one that uh, sustains the business here, yeah, to go, yeah, go ranking mm. uh, because it brings in daily uh, uh, cash flow. Mm. So it gives me more muscles to actually uh, work on the whole faster. Okay. Yes. Because it leaves everyday cash. Yes. But now, Chavia, I could actually the financials. How? 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 Thank you every day. You go, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it takes it's a local. That's the first thing. And I give only a consistent, sometimes you can have your car in a buyer, sometimes you can have your money. How check is a set amount every day? Because the taxi, taxi owner, they check is out, okay. But the nine clip, I'll tell you, when I was in Spanish. No, uh, the driver gets on a little sort of chalet and it is a chalet every, every Monday. Mm. Yes. So I check it on a weekly basis. Yes. But you are still chowing the money yes. yeah, on a weekly basis. How can you business think of it? I've looked at it. Uja, you have business for the personal item. 
Let's talk about the corporate side of the business. One of your main clients, Ki Kusile Power Station. Yes. High failure project, yo. What do you Cross border. High failure, immediately all the buses that are in Kusile, they're going to cross border. I'm busy with the, with the project, Tiago Petal in Belfast. Uh, I'm still in negotiations in with the Postman Tax Association and Park mm. Station mm. to actually come and put in my vehicles there. Okay. Yes. Osha long distance. Yes. From Josie or from Petal? From Josie mm -hmm. to Mozambique mm -hmm. and Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. From Petal to Mozambique, I'm actually opening up satellite offices okay. because my business we actually buying tickets. Okay. So when you 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 book, we actually know how many people are going to pick up in Johannesburg, Pretoria, and all those things to actually fill up a bus. Okay. Yes. And mainly Mozambique. Mainly Mozambique. And that's the long term goal of the business. That's a long time. Ago. What are some of the challenges that are associated with each of these divisions? So are like a corporate. What are some of the challenges you have like? Late payments. Okay. That is the biggest challenge that we get with the corporate uh, businesses. Yeah. So without you having a cash flow or ranking to actually sustain you, it would be very, very difficult for you to actually maintain the business. And then cross border, what are some of the challenges there? Uh, cross border is a seasonal business. Uh, so it needs one to actually go deeper in marketing it, to actually try to actually sustain it for it to go on a daily basis. Because the competition is very high, because uh, with, uh, we've got a lot of pirates, illegal operators from Mozambique that comes in our townships, our towns. But to collect our But to collect our to you know, start following the procedure, because now we have to pay SARS to actually operate, but they're actually operating Freely. So they're able to be cheaper than you? We, we kill our business because we're actually trying to compete with the pirates. We're not actually uh, charging the customers the right price that we should be charging them. Mm. Yes. So how are you dealing with that challenge? We have got pirate squads that uh, actually go safeguard our work. Not like an or and things like that, and try and make sure that they don't come back to our towns and things like that. Yeah. If I ever have a problem in Middleburg, <laughs> I'm saving your number. I can't save a man. Um, okay. And then, every day, what are some of the challenges there? Uh, the challenges will be the drivers. If, uh, you know, the drivers are not focused, they will not bring in the, you know, the, the, the fixed amount of money that you actually agree that you on. agree on, yeah. Yes. And an issue of changing drivers, it's it's not something that uh, I do. But sometimes we're actually forced to actually do such a thing because once you change drivers on a regular uh, basis and things on a particular vehicle, the lifespan of the vehicle is actually shortened. Yeah. So I'll so, tell a commitment. The, uh, you are able to maintain yes. at least stuff sets one hour so that guys can take responsibility yes. and work a bit better yes. in order for them to stay committed. Yes. Okay. Um, what do you think you could do better as, as an entrepreneur? If I could actually uh, invest more in, in my marketing, I think my business would actually flourish more and uh, increase my fleet because I can, the, the market is big. In both uh, cross-border and corporate, the market is big. If you normally budget your marketing, what, what kind of things would you do? I'd make everyone see SK5 every corner. How? Uh, billboards, uh, flyers, uh, websites, the works. Okay, yes. I'm going to hand you over to a business coach at least Hono Ringali somebody who understands business and then we'll chat again tomorrow and you can share some of what you've learned when you talk to myself and the other judges. Okay, thank well, you. Sure. Khaukhel is a young man on the move. His business model could well be the catalyst for much needed change in the way the taxi industry is run in South Africa. I'm introducing him to someone who could help him take his business to even greater heights. Interview no Pepsi, Hamburger Cool, and Safu to Malmas, a Tom Zazon, Possa Possa, and a question of money in Yana, but Nemonian Balegata. And don't expect you to go to Uncle Memo mentally to actually know where other angles I can actually hit in my market. I'm not sure in every kind of it work. I think you need to target where your 
your market is, where the people that need to move are. I understand. I understand. If I'm in I couldn't really understand. She doesn't understand it, that's not at all. My name is Tulima Kubane, and I'm a director and founder of Mint Fresh Advisory Services. And it's a company that's focused on management consulting. One of our key areas is strategy and um, doing any work that's strategic from business cases, business plans, restructures. Well, entrepreneurship, I guess, is something that's in my blood. <laughs> and I'm an entrepreneur myself. And I think over the last couple of years, I've become more passionate to see more people get into business and succeed in business. What qualifies me to be a coach and making moves? I have a diverse set of skills. I've got financial skills, operational skills, strategy skills. I'm also quite a well-networked individual. In helping entrepreneurs, connecting them to the right people, it's something that I'm able to do. A man without a vision is a man without a future. And a man without a future always returns to his past. So in everything that I do, I always make sure that I'm working towards a vision and I'm moving forward. And what are you doing differently to take the taxi industry and, and your business in particular, you know, to the next level? I mean, the taxi industry has been very informal and you've talked about corporatizing the business. Uh, a few years back, you know, the motherboard of the text industry, Santaco, actually introduced the TR3020 strategy. Mm. What is that? Can you briefly explain that? That is to actually redefine, uh, reposition and restructure the taxi industry. So I actually based my business onto that. Okay, okay. Let's focus on the growth. You said 2016 you're planning to grow. Yes. What's the plan? Uh, my plan is actually to invest more on advertising okay, and actually opening up satellite offices in each and every corner, you know, your business needs to be, needs to be there, you need to advertise in every corner, you need to... Well, I'm not sure in every corner if it work. I think you need to target where your, your market is, where the people that need to move are. <laughs> I'm not sure if they're in every corner. They're in every corner. It could be a product to go to Kule in the taxi business, so it feels like, you know, I know the taxi business. No one can tell me anything about the taxi business. I grew up in this business, so... I understand. I understand. If I'm in I couldn't really understand. So in terms of your growth strategy, you only just you want to just focus on the marketing. I don't think marketing is enough in terms of growing your business. I mean, have you looked at, do you have enough vehicles? Because obviously, if you're going to start marketing, you're going to have an influx of people. Do you have enough vehicles? Do you have enough drivers? I believe I've got enough fleet. And whenever that I do not have fleet, because like uh, we, we, we're trying to incorporate ourselves with other, because I cannot just go trade our business. When we trade in Mozambique or we trade in Zimbabwe, we've got joint venture agreements. Okay. Or we trade 50-50. They cannot come into South Africa and they take two weeks to actually load because they only find the strength of my vehicles that are packed here. Mm. So when you're saying growth, what are we working with? What, what's the plan? What are we working towards? You know, if in a month I could try and transport over a thousand people, thousand five people. What are you currently transporting? 500, 600 currently okay. in a month. So how are you going to triple that? Uh, to actually go deeper, do my groundwork and go to, you know, more into the townships. It's so I can actually market myself, make my business to be known. How Khalil knows his business, but I just got a feeling about his, he doesn't know the numbers very well. And then in terms of margins, which has a higher margin, the local uh, taxi business or the Mozambican and, and what are the margins on both? Profits, Joe, in the Mozambican routes. Yeah, but do you know what the percentage is? If I were to compare 
Because mm. you need to do that because you've decided it's profitable and for you to for you to almost focus entirely on this business and you're saying this is one what I want to grow you need to be a hundred percent certain that it's more profitable than your current operation so you need to do those calculations so that you could be comfortable to say this is what I'm making on my South African operation this is what I'm making from my cross-border he knows he's making a lot of money and I think a lot of decisions are not really based on having done the numbers to back up, you know, the decision. Because if you're going to be going to a whole new line, you know, or starting a new product, a new service as, as a business, you need to have done the calculations to say, OK, Maspalalana, this is how much money we're actually going to make, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I've learned a lot. Things that I was not actually looking at or paying attention to. It's always good to back your gut feeling with facts and figures. You need to do the calculations. Don't only go on the hunch. Hunch is a good place to start, but it's got to be backed up by some, by some evidence. And if you're planning to grow and you're looking for investors, it, you can easily convince an investor to say, you know what, I need to be bulking up on my fleet. I need to buy five more vehicles. And I've, I've looked at the numbers. This is what I was making in South Africa. This is what I'll be making. And this is the profitability. It makes sense to focus more of my time and energy on, on this. You need to be pitching at some point to us, you know. So we need to talk about that. If you got the 50,000 rand into your business, what would you do with it? So that's, that's, that's the important thing that you need to bring across um, to the pitch. I know exactly what I'm going to do with the 50,000 rand. So it's just that mean I have to put it in, you know, into contact on how I'm actually going to use the to actually convince them to actually give it to me. I'm making moves in a super sum of money over 50,000 rand to invest in a business. 11 young entrepreneurs will get a chance to showcase their businesses. Each entrepreneur will get an opportunity to pitch for this investment into their business. The judges will use their own discretion. We'll go through to our final episode where they'll battle it out the grand prize. We are like making moves in Jalong of Sombrug of Half Pass One. Emin, SABC One, Msanti, for sure. Making moves. Making moves. This is right. Is all the same name of Pepsi? What took the son and a coach? But Jim Namsan is also pitch against this. Maglin did an apparati. This is one. I've been nervous, but I got a little bit of 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 a little bit there's a, you know, there's a theoretical part of business than being practical. Mm -hmm. yes. First time you pitch? Yeah. Mm. First time. Yeah, that's right. This is why I think if you say anything to me, you're not going to be able to do it. You're not going to be able to do it. You're not going to be able to understand the business like you're not going to be able to do it. You're not going to be able to do it. Sure, you're not I am going to show you how to do this. I am Welcome back to Making Moves. How are you feeling? I'm a bit nervous, but I get sharp. What's up? Yeah. yeah, nothing freezes you. It's like I'm a bit nervous, but I get sharp. <laughs> All right, so I was Tuli. You spent some time with her yesterday doing some coaching. She's my fellow judge. On my right is Martine. 
You've got four minutes to tell us about your business and tell us why we should give you 50,000 Rand and what you're going to do with it. And your four minutes starts now. Okay. Five months ago, uh, I started the cross-border uh, operation as an expansion to my business, of my transport business. Uh, you know, through that month, I actually transported two, two people. Uh, with their luggages. So through research, I found out that 2.5, 2.5, billion people tra uh, between South Africa and Mozambique to the Libombo Resano border posts at an annual of 4.6 million people and 730,000 vehicles in 87 trucks crosses the border. So 12% of that, that is 552 people, reside in Kangala district and the Khartseba district, that is where my business is based. So with that, I saw potential. So I invested 20,000 rand on my marketing strategy through distributing flyers uh, in, the, uh, in the mines, uh, in the locations, in and around Steve Chete. So with that, to date, in this day, I'm actually transporting 125 people per week. That is uh, 502 people in a month. So that basically that in a week I'm able to make for this uh, in a week, uh, in a month I, I make a revenue of 2,000 rent. So with that, if I were to get a 50,000 rent, I said in the beginning that I've already made satellite uh, offices in various towns. So with that 50,000 rent, I would actually use it for market, to market in the other towns so that it can actually secure me return trips in Mozambique and in the other uh, towns that I've got satellite offices in. And through that, I can actually double my sales and actually use two vehicles instead of using one vehicle per day and use two vehicles in a day. So that will double, uh, it will double the money that I make in a day. So in a month, I know that I'll actually transport 1,008 people with two vehicles per day. And that will put me in a revenue of net per month. Thank you. Okay, so that's 1,008. Are you done? I'm done. Okay, you still have a bit of time, but we can go straight into question and answer. Yes. Right now, Irutiako, in terms of cross-border, is only Mozambique? No. Okay, where else? And Zimbabwe. And Zimbabwe? Yes. Okay, so exactly what do you want to use the money for? Uh, the money, I want to use it uh, directly for my satellite offices to actually, you know, I believe that my marketing strategy that I use of distributing flyers, because it goes down to the roots, to the people. So you want to spend 50,000 on flyers? Not only for us, I want to rebrand and make visibility of the offices that I have on or the satellite offices that I've got. Okay. Okay. How many vans do you have at the moment? Your buses, how many? My total fleet I've got mostly vehicles. Okay. But the number of vehicles that I use on the cross border in Middlebeck, I only use one 22 seater bus. Okay. So after all expenses, fuel and everything that the bus leaves me, as well, the rent per day. Per day. Per day. Every time you make a trip. Yes. Okay. It is the, after all expenses. And you make how many trips a week? I go every day. Six yeah. trips a week. Jeez, can I join yeah. you in business? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you've got another twenty seater available that you can second I've got, if I've got twenty two seaters. Oh. My aim is to actually in a day I could actually fill four twenty two seaters okay. going up to Mozambique. Okay. Okay. How much do you make on your taxis locally per day? The per vehicle a day. The per vehicle. So your cross border is your most profitable. I could say that. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Bru. Um, we're going to discuss and then call you back. Thank you very sure. much. I feel like I could have actually shared more information with them so that they can actually understand the type of trade that I'm busy with. Taxi business is uh, mostly known as a one-man's business. 
uh, for, for you to actually to infiltrate into the customers, you need to actually make your brand to be known to the people so that they can actually trust you. It seems like it's not organized. It just happens haphazardly. I, I disagree with where he wants to spend the money. Okay. Martin, what do we do with this okay. young man? So I'm delivering your faith today. Um, Martine was jumping up and down and being very excited, so I don't even <laughs> want to start with her. Um, Tuli, what are your thoughts? He's got a good business model, especially tapping into the cross-border business because it seems like it's not organized, it just happens haphazardly. If he's able to have regular transport and people get to recognize him as well um, across the border, I think he's got something good there. Do you think I think the the one thing that um, you know would be would be interesting is to see how uh, the pamphlet drop does affect the business. I'm sure he has a little bit of statistics, so maybe we can just ask him to go and do that exercise from his last pamphlet pamphlet drop to just see, you know, and then he'll be able to determine the 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 increase or growth. A potential of, of putting another but other than that I think he's he knows his stuff he's clearly um, very au fait with the industry you know you know what my thing is no firstly I, I disagree with where he wants to spend the money I think if taxis are making you money buy more taxis mm -hmm. But I also understand that there's very little marketing that you can do in that industry, Pepsi. So you can't do social media, network marketing, all of that. Listen, you if need you said that to me, serious here's visibility. 50 grand, I'd buy another taxi, put it on the route, and then the profits from that taxi I would put into marketing. Okay, that's what, but, but marketing is important. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely, it's, it's critical. I, I do like his idea in terms of one of the things that are going to set him apart mm. is professionalizing his outfit yes. and branding yes. his taxis. Yes. So you start to create a brand yes. and it starts to formalize that space okay. a little bit. Perfect. Let's bring him back in. I guess logos Welcome back. So on a scale of one to ten, how do you think you performed? Uh, so I think nine. <laughs> nine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, seven. Maybe. <laughs> no? And I'm being generous. Here's my thing, Altiak, is that e business are we kelezang it? but you've got an instinct for business and you'll always make money because you've got that hustle. I've seen lots of guys, banama takes, banama garage and whatnot, and grow and make a lot of money, but never really become wealthy. The kind of money that's going to live beyond your kids and your kids' kids. And that requires a different type of thinking. So I feel like you need to recognize ama limitation wako, continue making money, but you need to find somebody or other people that you trust 
to handle certain things so that they can start to build and formalize certain things, right? Keep you doing what you're doing and keep pushing and keep pushing so that you can start to build wealth, so you can start to build investment, so you can start to build something that is going to last even longer than you. Do you know what I mean? So that the day you stop breathing, the business doesn't stop. Like your dad used to own taxis, ain't it? Yes. But it time I'm sure you had to start afresh from from a, a sub A again, ain't it? And that doesn't have to happen with you. No. Do you understand what I mean? So I, I feel like that's what I wish for you, because I believe that with that, then you're unstoppable. Um, really. And then Usi Studio has got some tasks, some things that she'd like things you would benefit from doing in your business. Do a business plan for your entire business and then look at the different elements of it, the corporate business, the cross-border and the local taxis. And you already have that wish for yourself to corporatize the business. So a business plan would help you to do that. And then secondly, get an accountant, you know, a bookkeeper, someone who's going to help you to just keep track of the finances that come in and out of your business. It's a cash business, so sometimes some transactions get m uh, missed because a driver comes, they need to go and buy brakes, you know, you've got the cash, you give them, they go and buy cash, and sometimes things like that are not recorded. So get an, an accountant to assist you. And they'll also help you in just thinking through how you corporatize your business so things don't happen ad hoc, so that you've got systems in place and how you do things. You know, I also think that in business, once you start making a little bit of money, you need two people. If you can have an accountant and a lawyer, then you're fine. Then they'll protect the things that, um, that you're not aware of, the risks that you don't know. They'll be able to protect that. Do you understand? Okay. Martin, what do we do with this okay. young man? So I'm delivering your faith today. Whatever our decision is, you've got an amazing business. And if you just apply what um, Pepsi and Tuli's given you as tasks, you'll grow exponentially, okay? Having said that, we would like to see you back on the show. Shab, thank you very much. Thank you Good very luck much. with your tasks. We look forward to seeing you in a few weeks. Thank you. Shop. I'm happy that I'm going to uh, second round. So next time when I come back, I'll be fully prepared. But I'm positive I'm going to win this because I know that I know my business very well. <laughs>